Friends, let us pray. God of the ages, as we open the scripture today, may we see a reflection of ourselves as we read the stories, may we hear your word to us. As we encounter Christ, may we know your love for all of us. The Easter season is a celebration of new life. As we share with our community and the world, we become those seeds of new life, blooming with God's love. Amen. It has usually been our practice to share in a story time, designed supposedly for children, but today I would invite the children among us and all of those who are young at heart and wish that they were children again. I invite you to go on a kind of a scavenger hunt after this worship time is over. Go outside. See how many signs of new life you can find. Things like a flower, uh, bees buzzing, blossoms in a fruit tree, something sprouting in your garden, signs in windows, a new house being built. Make a list. Be creative. Then rejoice in all the things that you have found. Amen. In our lectionary lessons for this week, I would like to share two of the scriptures. First, from the book of Psalms, the 16th Psalm. And if you have a Bible and you want to read along, or if you have your voices united at home with you, it is found at 738 in Voices United. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I have said to God, you are my God. From you alone comes all my prosperity. All my delight is in the faithful who dwell in the land and those who excel in virtue. But as for those who run after other gods, their troubles shall be multiplied. Libations of blood I will not offer to those gods, nor will I take their name upon my lips. You, God, are my allotted portion and my cup. You yourself have cast my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a noble heritage. I will thank you, God, for giving me counsel. At night, you also teach my heart. I keep you always before me. You are on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. So my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices, for my body shall also rest in safety. For you will not suffer me to the grave, nor suffer your beloved to see the abyss. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and from your right hand flow delights forevermore. Amen. And reading further from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter and reading from verses 19 through 31. The disciples were afraid of the Jewish leaders, and on the evening of that same Sunday, they locked themselves in a room. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the middle of the group. 
he greeted them and showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they became very happy. After Jesus had greeted them again, he said, I am sending you just as the Father has sent me. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they will be forgiven. But if you don't forgive their sins, they will not be forgiven. Although Thomas the twin was one of the twelve disciples, he wasn't with the others when Jesus appeared to them. So they told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, First, I must see the nail scars in his hands and touch them with my finger. I must put my hand where the spear went into his side. I won't believe unless I do this. A week later, the disciples were together again. This time Thomas was with them. Jesus came in while the doors were all locked and stood in the middle of the group. He greeted his disciples and said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand in my side. Stop doubting and have faith. Thomas replied, You are my Lord and my God. Jesus said, Thomas, do you have faith because you have seen me? The people who have faith in me without seeing me are the ones who are really blessed. Jesus worked many other miracles with his disciples, and not all of them are written in this book. But these are written so that you will put your faith in Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God. If you have faith in him, you will have true life. Amen. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.